Hi, everyone. Well, we promised you more on the Internet, so here it is. I'm Katie Couric here with Dr. John LaPook, and we're talking about vitamin D because a big study came out today about vitamin D and breast cancer. And before we get to that, John, let's talk about vitamin D in general because it seems like it's the latest wonder vitamin. We've been hearing so much about it in recent months. Right. Why is it important? Well, when I was in medical school, it was important because if you had low vitamin D, it led to brittle bones. And now in recent years, we're finding all sorts of other things. Other things like what? It, it, the benefits of vitamin D? Yeah, you know, we started studying how vitamin D works, and it turns out that it's important for cell growth, and then somebody found out that it was important for cancer cells to blow up, apop apoptosis, your right. favorite word. Cell death. Cell death. And uh, then they looked to see whether low vitamin D led to various cancers and sure enough it turns out that people who have low levels of vitamin D have a higher chance of getting breast cancer and colon cancer and maybe even some other cancers. So the big question is, you know, is that just a chance relationship or is that actually a cause and effect? Is that a new study? Because I remember reading something about the, comp the, the sort of the correlation mm -hmm. between colon cancer, my area of interest, right. and lack of milk consumption. Over the last Remember, couple, didn't a yes. study come out over, about that? Over the last couple of years, you've seen what's called epidemiological observational studies where people say over the long run, over a number of years, if you look at people who develop colon cancer or they develop breast cancer, they have a higher chance of having a low level of vitamin D. But then it's not sure whether it's cause and effect, but it's very interesting because it's been known with breast cancer, for example, that women who, the closer you live to the equator, where you get more sunlight and a higher chance of having a high level of, and a good level of vitamin D, the closer you are to the equator, the lower chance you have of getting breast cancer. As you move away from the equator, and presumably your exposure to sunlight goes down and your vitamin D level goes down, right. you have a higher chance of getting breast cancer. Isn't that true of uh, some other diseases like multiple sclerosis? Multiple sclerosis, you know, yes, people have talked about that possible association. And in fact, now that everybody and their mother is coming in asking for vitamin D levels, people are, are trying to associate low vitamin D with everything. And in fact, people have wondered whether it's associated with multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, all sorts of depression. depression depression so of course because well there that that seems to make sense because when you talk about those light boxes mm -hmm. and seasonal affective disorder right and, and so, so is it the light or is it the vitamin D and that's a perfect example doesn't sure. sunlight have vitamin D doesn't it help okay, you produce so, it oh uh, yes absolutely so Doctor? it's tricky yes so it's you know people say sunlight you know helps you produce vitamin does it beam the vitamin D into your body no what happens is you have a chemical in your skin and when the sunlight goes onto it it causes that to turn into an active form of vitamin D so if you have sunlight exposure, then you can get vitamin D. And right now, we're avoiding the sun for good reasons, you know, in terms of not going into standing salons, right. uh, tanning salons and, and trying to be over, you know, get sunburns. But what happens is we spend more of our time indoors. We live in a part of the world where there may be not enough sunlight during, say, the winter, winter months. And because of that, our vitamin D level goes down. All right, so the big question I think everybody has now, and hopefully people looking at this want to know, is what is the best way to make sure you have adequate levels of vitamin D in your body? Okay, so the first thing is sunlight. You can go out, say, and the recommendation is looking on the web today, and I spoke to a, a few experts, so nobody knows exactly, right? But five to 30 minutes, two to three times a week from, say, 10 to 3. I told my dermatologist this, so and she went ballistic. But but it's it's not a matter of of you know frying yourself in the sun. And in any case, people who have darker skin, right, like African Americans, have the equivalent of an SPF 8,000. So even if they're out in the sun, they may not get enough level activation of their vitamin D. And in fact, that's true. African Americans tend to have lower level of vitamin D. So what do they do? You can get in your diet with fish like salmon, mackerel, tuna. Mm -hmm. It is in milk. It's and then in you get mercury to boot. Yeah, I know. that We did that other piece. <laughs> yeah. saying, as I was reading that, I said, oh, but in the other piece, we said yeah. everything in moderation, including excess, right? Right. I mean, we, uh, you can get it in milk, OK? But it, there's not all that much fortified. There's 400 international units in a quart of milk. And who's drinking a quart of milk these days, especially as an adult? And what's, you know what's interesting I found out today, I did not know this, is that they put in the vitamin D at the very end of the process. So when they have make cheese, cottage cheese, yogurt, they're taking out the milk before they add in the vitamin D. So you're not getting extra vitamin D from having those products like oh. cheese. I didn't know that until today. I did not I know did that not either. I did not know that. Okay, um, so and then the last way food. is supplements. And 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 what about getting it from supplements? Isn't that sort of the surefire way and you don't necessarily put yourself at risk right. for getting sort of a, skin, a, cancer, skin cancer? For sure. Melanoma in a Swedish study has been associated with 
uh, with with being in, in the tanning salons, and, it's, and we know that we know that squamous cells, basal cells. The American Academy of Dermatology went ballistic, you know, thinking about. The, anybody recommending going to a tanning salon to try to get your vitamin but D But we level should going. mention that, by the way, they're trying to market tanning salons mm -hmm. now, certain tanning salons, as good places to go to right. get vitamin D, right. which is really, really irresponsible, well, you isn't know, it, you, as a doctor? Yeah, even, even, even if you were to say, you know something, if I controlled it and I had a certain type of wavelength and I did it for a certain number of minutes, it would work and it would be... Why do that? It's not a regulated industry. So who knows? If would you send your daughter or son into a, some you know tanning salon where you're not sure exactly what they're getting? It's much easier to number one get a vitamin D level, know what you're starting out with, what, which I think is a reasonable thing to do, especially in older people. And number two, there are supplements. Now here's the caveat: the the recommend the RDAs, the recommended da daily allowance of these things. It's kind of a moving target a little bit. It's 400 right. international units, or maybe 600 as you get older. Um, you can take it from supplements, but think about it. When you take a, a multivite, there's 400 international units of vitamin D in that. You take some, some calcium, there's 200, 400, even 600 international units in and that. And don't you have to have vitamin D in conjunction with calcium to make the calcium absorb in your bones? Very good, and, and, and it has positive effects in the kidney, too. You need to get it absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract, and you need to have the, the vitamin D there. And you need magnesium, too, so that's why people say to take magnesium. But, um, with their calcium supplements. With their calcium right. supplements. But, but one of the, uh, uh, Shani Silverberg, who's a world expert today, I spoke to today about calcium metabolism, and she said, you know what's happening is people are coming in, they're getting a little bit of vitamin D from here, a little bit from there, and then on top of that, you can go on the net and you can just order vitamin D. It's not really regulated. So they're coming in with vitamin D toxicity. Yikes. And what's the problem with that is that you can get too much calcium in your urine and that can lead to kidney stones and you can have other problems. Okay, my head is spinning, but I think we got the points across. That. All right, yep. Dr. John LaPook, thank you very much. And hopefully we were helpful to you guys too. We hope you have a great weekend and uh, we'll see you later.